My name is Konrad Svenninger. I'm today in Bucharest, following up on the recent events in the Bivolaro case. I come from Soteria International, a human rights organization based in Denmark, in Copenhagen, and we have followed this case since 2007, when we were founded. The case recently escalated as the refugee Bivolaro, even though he has the protection of the Geneva Convention, was apprehended in Paris soon two weeks ago. This even if uh, the European arrest warrant that um, granted the apprehension has been questioned at many levels and is still questioned at many levels. Today we are going to do another kind of research that me personally I longed for this for eight years since um, in 2008 uh, we started, I came here to Bucharest the first time to investigate this case that has so many angles to it, so many uh, questions about why is spirituality a threat to society or considered a threat to some. We see in, not only in this case but others how spiritual leaders, spiritual movements are uh, persecuted throughout Europe even today. At that time I had uh, the hope to bring together two of the senior students and profiles of MISA for a commune talk. It didn't come to that at that time and I'm very happy today with the help of MISA TV where we are in this studio to have a talk together with uh, Adinata Nanda, Nico Katrina and Advaita Nanda, Mihai Stoyan who are senior students of um, Gregorian Bivolaro in, in uh, the refugee papers known as Magnus Aurolson and in the school known as Grieg. As a short presentation, we can say that uh, Adinata Nanda, you were his student already during the persecutions in the 80s. Yes, in since 82, 83. Yeah, so, and uh, like you have testified earlier in materials we made, you have also been in prison, been beaten we and so on. We were together that, once. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, further than that, you after uh, you have continued the tradition of Greek by uh, developing courses both at the theoretic level and with uh, practical implications yes. in different esoteric um, fields such as uh, Kashmirian Shaivism, uh, I Ching, um, the Bardo Todol explanations, uh, and about art and beauty in relationship to yoga and many other things. I, I know you have written many articles and also books. Yes. And uh, lately also been touring. I know last time we met you were yourself under investigation and couldn't travel freely. Exactly, and, exactly. And now you can and uh, travel Europe mostly with your lectures and workshops. Thank you for, for being in this meeting. Thank you for being invited to you. And also with Advaita Ananda, um, who is uh, the coordinator of the yoga teachers training and the tantra uh, teachers training of the school and also in the same way has uh, developed two courses, one in Tantra and one in meditation, unique in uh, their combination of theoretic and practical implications. Based on the teachings of Grieg and the school. Exactly, and, and um, you have also been uh, very much involved in the human rights aspects about the school and we have met in, in Warsaw, in Brussels, in different occasions where you have spoken about the specific uh, knowledge and aspects that you know well from the school. Yeah, and also specifically the case of Grieg in relation to human rights, because actually his case uh, regarding human rights uh, became very, very important for me also and for many other peoples. Mm. And you also have a blog the, where you write about these things and other spiritual, uh, more specifically the spiritual aspect. Very good. Well, what came to, what, what strikes one when seeing this case? First I heard of it, a Romanian yogi receiving asylum in Sweden. Then looking into it, being persecuted since the Ceausescu times but then continue being persecuted for yoga. Why is this yoga becoming such a, a hot potato for the Romanian society during these different regimes, during these different times? Well, it's, it's not so um, big as an enigma or such a, such a big mystery because 
um, during the, um, the dictatorship of Ceausescu, yoga was strictly forbidden, not officially, but very really. And uh, he was, it was like um, the only way that they, the, the, only, the only sphere of our life that they couldn't control. So uh, for them, yoga was really dangerous because uh, through yoga you are not um, so frightful, so, so afraid of, uh, of uh, this secret police. You are not uh, easy to be manipulated. And uh, this was the, the main reason about all, these, all those persecutions. And it's not so uh, difficult to understand why now it's quite the same, because here in Romania there are quite the same, same people. For instance, um, one of the, the, the most important uh, prosecutors in, uh, in uh, 2004, um, it was uh, Kaborski, it was it's, uh, his name, he was exactly the one who instrumented among some other other uh, secret police officers, the case of Ivolaro in uh, in 82, 83, 84, uh, no, 80, 80, 86 as well, and um, uh, some others uh, were involved in um, this uh, case, and now they are the same persons. A very thorough investigation, um, which was did, uh, made by. Um, uh, the general military prosecutor, Dan Voina, the general Dan Voina, uh, found that, um, as he said uh, officially, the same people who built artificially the case against Gregorian Bivolaru and Yoga, now they are continuing their work, founding and mostly justifying their um, persecution. Mm -hmm. And moreover, um, in time, it was revealed that um, the case prosecutor, George Balan, actually was involved in a kind of um, um, underground uh, network or um, like, uh, like, ma like mm -hmm. mafia. No. Now he is under prosecution. And um, now. So the prosecutor who exactly. started the case exactly. against the so, Bibular at the time is now so himself prosecuted it's, for. It's showing us that it was a political uh, command, dear. For instance, in 2004, uh, the, that, um, in that period, it was the Minister of Justice, Rodika Stanoyu, was proven to be an informant of the mm -hmm. secret police. So, let, let okay. me, because yeah, what you say reminds much of what uh, the researcher um, Gabriel Andrescu yes. has written yes. extensively about in mm -hmm. his two books. Um, what I would like to hear more about is, but there were other communist regimes where yoga teachers were not put in jail. There have been other totalitarian places where people have been allowed to practice yoga. No? Uh, so, what, what is, if, is there something uh, apart from, because also in the, in the Ceausescu times, I understand it was not from the beginning that it was against him, he was even led to teach the psychosomatic gymnastics mm -hmm. and so on. What happened? Was there something within the teachings? Was there something with his person? What went wrong no, there? I think if, if something shallow or uh, not so uh, powerful, it's okay. So it's like uh, like in the West now, yoga is mostly like, like as a gym. It's not a spiritual path. But when yoga becomes really a spiritual path, and here is where uh, yoga professor Gregorian Bivolaro came with something truly revolutionary. When yoga really become a spiritual path, this is a danger for all totalitarian, totalitarian regimes and uh, dictatorships. Even now, the hidden totalitarianism, totalitarianism. because you see, uh, we talk about Ceausescu and the communism as a very distinct historic period. But we have to uh, be clear that they are all kind of, uh, I would, I call it hidden totalitarianism, something that is deep inside of people, habits that don't die easy, and um, even the fear of transformation, the profound transformation. Uh, so when, when a yoga system becomes very effective and people don't need medicine, of course, f you can even face uh, a little bit of uh, 
resistance or uh, or push from the people who sell uh, very much uh, medicine and uh, of course it, that uh, naturally will uh, it's bad business uh, yeah it's very them. bad good yoga bad business yeah, for but, drugs but that's we we meet often in our when we meet different uh, organizations mm -hmm. Uh, who are under attack, so to say, that they say, well, we are dangerous because of uh, financial assistance, because of medical, uh, because of they wanting to keep the people uh, under and so on. But tell me, um, there is such a, in Romania coming here, I spoke with the taxi driver on the airport back, he agreed on many things about uh, possible corruption of uh, political leaders, even today about how money seems to come to Romania and disappear and so on. But when it came to Greek, we didn't agree anymore. Mm -hmm. He had a firm uh, view on uh, Greek and the yoga as uh, being not good for Romania. Because of the media intoxication of the public. Because the secret services are, re are still controlling a large part of the media in Romania, still. And, for instance, um, in uh, the big trust uh, antennas, antenna one, two, three, of uh, the proven uh, uh, covered officer of the secret police, Dan Voiculescu, now in jail. Um, all this, I mean, it was, a, and it is still, a very, very uh, aggressive and negative uh, campaign against Gregorian Bivolaro and Misa. Or um, in um, the trust of uh, the media trust of um, the, form, the former ex mogul of, of media Sorin Ovidiu Vintu, his counselor of his uh, media empire was a former colonel of the secret police, Georgi Ratsiu, who was involved as well in the Greek case. So it's not so difficult to, to, to unite the dots now. Mm -hmm. And because the media is uh, thinking uh, at unison, you know, all together against, people believe because it's not so difficult to be um, fooled if uh, some images and some sentences and some, um, you know, uh, half truths or maybe just a tiny part of truth are mixed with a lot of lies. Sounds credible if you don't know nothing about this. Let me put the question from, from a completely other angle. It's uh, as from what I know about the yoga system, it might be argued that yoga is not for everyone. That yoga is only for those who are really ready for the freedom, and the bigger part of population is not. But this is not explaining why they are against, like uh, that taxi driver that you mentioned. So this is not just uh, yoga is not for anyone. It's about um, a media intoxication that um, they were treated. I would say also that there is a, also a resistance sometimes uh, because the school, MISA, is unknown. What, what you see on TV and what you heard from the taxi driver, this is not MISA and this is not Greek. That, you, you, if, you, if you collect all the hundreds or no, thousands of uh, news from all the media outlets, uh, outlets about Greek, you collect, I think, 10 images about him. Mm. I mean, it's the life of a person. Yes. How come that they only have 10 images and half of them, more than half, are behind the bars and uh, with the, you know, be, uh, surrounded by police and with all this uh, force around him and so in very bad situations. 10 images in a lifetime. Yeah. So it's like, uh, it's very strange if it is interest in the subject. How come that no journalist went there in a Herculane camp to stay there for seven days and film the more than 5,000 people destinies meeting there and uh, interwoven with each other in spirals, in yoga practices, in meditations, in enormous lectures and so on. How come they never have an image with Greek keeping lectures in Herculane or in Kostinesht where is even a bigger event? Like, for instance, they present the spiral, the, the oh, I would call it the brand of Misa, the, the young uh, yogic spiral, and still they don't have, for instance, an image of Greek meditating uh, with the yogis in the spiral. Mm. They always show is he's missing. Like, why? Because 
uh, obviously there was no interest to look inside. Nobody was keeping, I mean, as you came here and you could uh, uh, talk to anyone, everybody could do it, but they were, it was no interest on that. They wanted only to, to film uh, strange images, uh, to catch one or two glimpses, which the media then reproduced thousands of times, while they could go every, uh, not every day, but maybe every year to get fresh images, extraordinary interesting uh, aspects. Interviews, for instance, with people who healed themselves through yoga, for real, with medical uh, testimonies, clear measurements, or interviews with people whose life was transformed because they came in this school, they mm. learned a yoga that transforms them profoundly, and then their entire life transformed. This would be a very interesting uh, production. Which is also because when I, when I travel in other countries and meet representatives of the school there, because even if many times we refer also in the European Parliament and when we speak, we speak about the Romanian yoga school. Misa, the Romanian uh, spiritual guide or guru or mentor, Greek. But actually, his teachings are available in all of the European countries. And, and in many other countries, uh, the schools and the techniques that he's teaching, his methodology is included in collaborations with municipalities, with enhancing the health and well-being of uh, societies. If, if I put it like this, would you agree that, that uh, the you are both Romanians, but you have been living abroad now for, because of different reasons, for 10, 15 years. Is the school still a, a Romanian factor, or is it more a European factor, a world factor? How do you see it? For me, it's an universal factor. And uh, uh, here I can add that what uh, made this yoga so unique and so effective, it's a brilliant discovery of uh, Gregorian Bivolaru. He was the one who introduced a very modern concept of uh, the resonance, which is a science, scientific concept, and it is studied in physics and in art and in some other domain of uh, knowledge. But uh, in yoga, can make wonders. So uh, this unique um, approach of yoga and spirituality generally, not only yoga, through the concept of the resonance, and not, uh, not uh, necessarily as a concept, not only as a concept, but as a practical, very practical tool, it's really revolutionary. So this is, this is why um, this kind of yoga, it's so, so spread and so uh, appreciated by those who are practicing. Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, contested by those who are actually not practicing it. Mm -hmm. They don't know. So this is, the reason, in my opinion, uh, of this huge number of followers or practitioners, and uh, because of that, and because this is not a Romanian invention, it's an universal invention. Like um, nobody claims, uh, even the law of physics, uh, they are Jewish just because Einstein was a Jew, or, or the English because Newton was an English. Mm. They are universal, mm. and it's it's this. Uh, really brilliant discovery that um, brought yoga into broad light and into here and now, into, into our life. Yeah. It's not any more uh, exotic uh, theory or um, a kind of um, very distant uh, spirituality, distant for us uh, as Christians and Europeans. It's here. Or we don't have time to, to go and to uh, practice uh, very, very intensively, many hours per day, as uh, in India, uh, uh, in some ashrams. But if you can do this, we can bring yoga into our life. If you, can, if you cannot bring our life to yoga so much, this is a brilliant uh, discovery that we, through this uh, approach, based on the resonance principle, we can bring yoga into our life. Yeah. And also, like you say, it's a, it's a contribution to the universe or the universal uh, factor. We must remember also that um, when coming here, it's one side. When coming out of Romania, uh, Gregorian Bivularo is a refugee. 
he is protected. He's a person where society, where Europe has said this man needs to be protected against the persecution. And also with the, the media, it uh, must be highlighted that many um, uh, European journalists, such as the Vibeke Sperling, who is an expert of human rights and one of the big journalists in, in my country, in Denmark, has written extensively on the case from a whole other perspective. And I am um, also amazed by seeing that the practitioners of the school, those following Grieg, you find them in, in very high positions, often in society, or well-educated, and speaking, when you meet them, speaking with such emphasis on how the yoga mm -hmm. has transformed not only their life, but also their professional insights, mm -hmm. how it helps them with their uh, research as uh, doctors, as scientists, as musicians, as architects. And what are your experiences? Because, because this, uh, yeah, um, you pointed out something um, that also makes, on one hand, this uh, yoga system very popular. And I can tell from experience that it, it spreads naturally, you can say. And made uh, also, from, from another perspective, Grieg a person who is an initiator. It, it's true, he, he put together in a genius way concepts that are bring, uh, belonging to modern uh, physics, uh, math mathematics or, or science, and ancient uh, philosophy and ancient uh, theories. But he, he managed to put it in such effective way that as uh, Niku said, they, they bring yoga into our life. And um, that was one of the elements. Yoga is not anymore a hobby that you practice, like you go to two, three times per week and to the yoga gym or to the gym where they practice a little bit of yoga. And you do that yoga as a little bit of hobby and health. Then uh, when you practice yoga in this manner, it, yoga becomes a part of your development. It's exactly as becomes a part of your daily life and is you cannot uh, ignore it because if you are for instance stronger mentally is not only when you are in the yoga session you are also out of the yoga session uh, more intelligent and then you can do your job wherever you are better or if your heart is open spiritual heart is more open and you can love more intensive in when you do the yoga and you feel universal love and you feel so uh, amazing you also when you go home and you see your girlfriend uh, then you are more loving and your couple relationship transforms and for instance for, for a person who have a problem in the couple relationship that person will say yoga saved me but not as mm. um, and of course that person will be very grateful to Grieg but to Grieg as the one who the founder and the one who provided and this is where also a mistake is made very often they, that because of course you are grateful to the one who invented insulin because if you are diabetic because it saved your life but not because uh, the, the person itself well, but person what the ground, yeah. yeah but what it represents mm. for you and of course this is uh, where um, you can see uh, the genius of Greek spreading even beyond uh, all the per persecution and they can't stop it in this uh, respect. And I want to add something here, uh, yeah. which is, I consider it is very important. Um, it's quite a paradox uh, at first look, at the first look. Uh, this yoga that uh, Greek um, offers, because, uh, and this I want to underline, because uh, telling about resonance, telling about this, um, uh, I, w I don't want to, to be understood as a, a completely new form of spirituality. Well, the paradox, apparently, paradox is it is strictly and completely traditional, completely, I mean, ad literam traditional, it's completely, but it's completely modern in the same time. Nobody did, in my knowledge uh, as well, something like that before, nobody. Either you were strictly and uh, in a traditional way, everything was um, integrated exactly like in India, uh, in a very um, ancient way, and you, you had to, to adapt uh, 
to renounce, uh, even to renounce to, to your life in order to, to adopt that uh, ancient style of life, which actually is not very, very fit for, for now. Or uh, you invent uh, some kind of new, new agey type mm -hmm. of spirituality, and you, you can claim that you invented it, it's yours, but this is pure tradition offered in, an, in a perfect form for the modern person. And this is why it's so easy, this easiness of practicing, this, this array, vast array of, of results, of, um, of effects, beneficent effects, are coming from here. And this is why so many people were, are, when are facing or entering in contact with uh, this kind of yoga, say, wow, it's, uh, it's different. It's a, it's a completely different way. I remember, for instance, we have a course in the uh, in United States. And uh, there in the United States, uh, to, to say usually right, like you are a yoga teacher, is like uh, what people understand. Well, it's a good guy. Uh, but uh, a simple-minded one, because yoga teacher in America is like uh, a gym teacher, like a little coach of uh, some uh, gym. And um, to that yoga course, uh, after a while, there, there, were, there were people who said, my God, that, but you, you should uh, call yourself other, uh, in another way, because I have the impression when I come to you that uh, I, uh, I'm on a street with a lot of uh, very cheap pizzas, and here is a very luxurious restaurant. But it's, it's the same street with all these uh, very small uh, and cheap uh, pizza shops. In the same line uh, also about um, the way the school offers um, paradoxical aspects. I want to point out one element that is um, I, I used to remind the students about it. This fact that the Greek is revealing all the secrets. You know, in all the all the masters, all these uh, modern uh, big uh, gurus and so on, they keep on the sleeves, so to speak, uh, there the aces, the, you know, the, the secrets of the masters, while Gring was even talking about the state of a spiritual guide. He was explaining it, like make it available for everyone, not because he put himself on a formal pedestal very high up, but simply giving to everyone, please, inviting everyone, please, actually giving all the tools to become that, which is Exactly as Nico said, this is highly traditional. I mean, that's exactly. what exactly all the masters in the ancient time was doing. They were not put, not teaching to put themselves high, but teaching to uh, to give to everyone the chance to be high as they were, as they achieved. But also, he's very modern because he is here. He is here, teaching, giving all the. And let's face it, in an economical world. To give all your secrets out for free, it's a, a bad business. As we say, it's, it's not uh, not very uh, not very big advantage because you give all your secrets. What do you keep uh, for yourself? But actually, he's giving given the state of spiritual guide. Mm. It's, it's one of the one of the unique things of this school. In this school, the spiritual guide is explaining how you can get. To be a spiritual guide, and moreover, he is uh, becoming transparent, so to speak. I mean, he never encouraged. Uh, on the contrary, he discouraged any attempt of uh, putting him uh, on some high pedestal and to be like uh, you know, like in India, to adore him or to pray to him. No, absolutely not. On the contrary. But then, what do we mean with traditional? Because given written material that you're you're famous for to give all the all the a lot of initiation it's uh, yearly in the courses there are new initiations extensive written material um, not the guru worship in its normal way and so on. so what is traditional no in actually it's not normal way I, from my opinion this is not normal uh, and what, hap what happens in, uh, in India and some other country is not normal. It, it's not like uh, we, you can read in all these ancient books. So yes, it is an adoration of God, 
maybe if you are relating, uh, but seeing through him, not seeing just him, uh, that person who is your guru. Seeing through him, this is the traditional way. And seeing through him means like he's transparent. He, he's just uh, showing you, look, like, look this way. Mm -hmm. And he disappears in order to, to leave you in the direct contact with divinity. So it's not normal to put yourself only through me. Mm -hmm. And no, don't uh, go to others. Let's come back to tradition. But, but, but I, yeah? I want to tell mm -hmm. you also about this traditional. The fact that um, uh, actually uh, at one point, Greg um, answering to some questions about this, uh, why is he not wearing uh, yogi? Orange, yo orange, orange, orange yeah, or white. Uh, <laughs> white, or these clothes. yogi clothes mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. He said that what he is doing is to go to the principles that were animating exactly. those yogis and he brings the principles and and then on upon those principles which are like the pillars of the the foundation of the building we can build with modern tools but we have the pillars which are the foundation the fundamental and these are traditionals because in that i mean you can imagine 2000 years ago a yogi dressed in orange he was fancy but because, because they were wearing these things on a daily basis, so he was up to the society. Probably he was considered up to the fashion. Yeah. So um, yeah. why to go back to the fashion of 2000 years ago? But maybe the fashion then, it was dictated by some spiritual principles, such as colors of the... Uh, different wearing different colors which are influencing different uh, states in the human being and nowadays because we lost the principles we just have a fashion that is blind and then Greg is the one saying these are the including in the maybe in the way you dress maybe in the way you eat these are the principles yes. and that's highly traditional that, that purely traditional and and I want to add this is why I I told you it's not Romanian, it's universal. Because what Greek is revealing, it's an universal tradition. What is behind any appearances and any um, um, special uh, or particular religious or cultural um, uh, periods, everything is changing at surface. But deep down in the core, this is the spirituality the real one, and this is the real tradition, which is universal because it's not belonging to a, sp a special age or epoch or a special uh, culture, a special nation. No, it's not Hindu, Tibetan, Chinese, uh, Romanian. It's universal, this core, these pillars, as uh, Mihai put it. Uh, it's um, that's like a real basis of spirituality. And once you are discovering this, and this is the spirituality. And this is what is really, really uh, the value, which is universal and it's what is called the eternal tradition. There is a phenomenon when you put spirituality from that level, you also have to cover many domains of life that when you have a lower level, you can't see or you block them away with a fence, with a taboo that you say, I'm not looking there. Analogically, it's like you are suddenly rising with a helicopter above a city and then instead of uh, looking only in the areas of the city which are permitted because the rest was in ancient time already blocked and says you don't go there, you don't go there. When you rise with a helicopter, you see in all the gardens, in all the areas. You are forced almost, analogically, you're not forced, but I, you can't stop yourself seeing everything and then you start to wonder, why is that there? Let's, let's uh, have this yeah. one. And this is what happens, for instance, with people learning yoga in this school and discovering that they also have a heart, they also have the, the duty for, your soul, for their soul to love. They also have relationships, they discover polarity, which mm. is now a big confusion in, mm. in the whole world, gender confusion mm. and so on. They also have sexuality mm. and we have an immense contribution of this school to bring uh, love uh, in the intimacy and to transform sex into lovemaking. So 
uh, all these um, these aspects are inevitable when you rise so high the perspective and this is what greek did greek is like a not a helicopter like a racket who who took off and then is is taking the whole perspective so high that you engulf the you include in your view the whole planet actually much more than a planet and then you start to understand even social systems how they work and it's not a coincidence greek was even talking about that at some point not necessarily that he's focusing upon it, but he was talking about the way the society is set up and also inevitably the wrong things that are going there. Why? Because it's a perspective that includes everything that you can't avoid un unless you make a compromise, a severe compromise with your consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a consequence that is inevitable when you do that. And many times people don't see that because they stay there on the ground in a very... Uh, dwarf perspective and then they see just the fence around. Yes, but the worst thing is they are coming against you yeah. if you do this. <laughs> yeah. Because, this, and this is very simply put, the main problem. When we are, you are focused on the essence, yeah, you can see, you can, you can identify very easily to you, to some other, if they are authentic. They are, doesn't matter ex, the exterior, that exterior, they are dressed in another way, mm -hmm. they are eating in another way. But if you are focused just to the appearances, then you fight with them because they are against your God, which is completely nonsense or absurd. Mm. Or they trespass a rule that you never trespass. Yes. Yeah. Yoga and sexuality don't exist. Which is false in ancient treaties. There are chapters in the yoga treaties where they deal also with that. Not only with, as they try to put it, some perverse journalists. Ah, you're doing uh, that. No, it's it's uh, something that exists in the human being, and of course it addressed in, in few sutras there. So you see, uh, on this background, it's very easy that uh, media intoxication. I'm coming back to your taxi driver. Uh, can be so effective because this is the general background of even our society here and everywhere people are very easy to be to believe uh, this kind of thing because they are mostly superficial they are not uh, we are not living in a world uh, full of uh, very very deep thinkers or uh, philosophers no all of us we know that it's not true so uh, this is uh, why uh, there are so many attacks or, uh, or very aggressive um, um, reactions towards him and mm -hmm. towards what he did because what he did, I dare to, we dare to say that it is really revolutionary. It's a spiritual revolution. Um, we, when we speak about Greek and his school, we always speak about a spiritual movement rather than, uh, uh, like in your example from America, but also yes. in Europe, yoga as being something more gymnastic. And if we come to God, and this is something that is uh, an integrated part of Greek's vocabulary, an essential part, maybe the, the main part. How does this go together with saying that yoga is not a religion? <laughs> but yoga is spirituality and the goal of any authentic spirituality is discovering God and melting with God in your life. This is um, a universal way of relating with God and speaking of, of this uh, we can mention here another um, uh, brilliant um, initiative and also the discovery of uh, Greek, uh, which is called, he called it like uh, the charismatic movement, in which he's offering the direct ways to be just you and God, nobody in between. It's a way of, um, of being tuned or related to the divine grace itself, to God himself. Beyond anything, beyond any religion, tradition, I mean, just the purest form, the purest form of spirituality. Beside, I mean, despite and, 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 um, and beyond any limitation, definition, descriptions, and uh, systems of thinking, and so on. 
but you know, you say God, uh, God is in Greek's vocabulary. But to the, in, in Greek's vocabulary, there are many things that appeared uh, long ago and now they are in the vo General, normal vocabulary. Mainstream one. Yeah, yeah. mainstream vocabulary. And uh, for, just to give you this example, I just read a few days ago the uh, titles in many articles, something going like this, scientists discovered God particle, they are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> It says, Why? <laughs> yeah, like exactly. I mean, you, sorry, you, you, like you have the idea that God and science can't, yes, cannot be reconciled. But on the other hand, uh, scientists with an open mind and a vast horizon, they were speaking about the intelligent design, they were speaking about the concepts of implicit order. With other words, they were starting to intuit that behind the, let's say, the apparent chaos uh, randomization of all phenomena, there is a coherence, there is mm -hmm. a state of consciousness, which is not by coincidence going exactly by the point to the ancient scriptures, you can say, writings, which were not religion in any way, religions were appearing afterwards, and that's why you can see that what uh, Greek was doing was actually to revive all these um, profound uh, forms of wisdom, but in, a, in the modern way. This perfect uh, fusion between spirituality and science, this is making his uh, work and his message of Greeks uh, so effective. This is... Um, another way of um, presenting that um, apparently paradox of um, perfect, being perfectly traditional and perfectly modern in the same time, in the absolutely same time. Because what Greek is giving us, it's a way of making all this alive, making alive the principle and the, um, the truth of the tradition, traditions, uh, doesn't matter India, Tibet and so on, and making alive, alive as well, uh, these uh, modern scientific principles. To, I mean, for, for instance, the holographic principle of the universe. Yeah, it is known, it's described in physics, it's accepted, it's, it's a fact. But this is a theory. For us, as yogis, this is not just a theory. It's a reality, it's an experience. It's something alive. And here is um, uh, the crucial uh, uh, point and the main difference between this yoga and a philosophy uh, or a scientific approach of, of, uh, human, of, upon human beings, spirituality, what God, and even the word God. It, it's not just the word, it's an experience. Mm -hmm. It's a discovery here and now in our consciousness, in our reality. And this is really a fully spiritualized life that we, we can have uh, following this path. And now you're here to senior students and followers of Greek and you <coughs> have this life, you have this experience. But how is it actually coming from, you say, he is reflecting these principles, it's not him as a person, it's, it's a building on, on the core of spirituality and so on. Good. How is that put into practice so that the students coming to the courses are actually led into that? What makes a difference? What, what, what makes that become efficient in the school? Because it's you describe it very beautifully. And how does it become a living experience, like it seems you have? On one hand is, um, is the knowledge, which is uh, presented in a very clear and adapted way. And we have also the examples, as uh, Mihai said about the exemplification. He gave us, and he giving, he's giving us examples, like inner state. So now you you combine, you put together your state, your experience, with your knowledge. This is supramental, because from out of this fusion, the knowledge, the real knowledge, the deep knowledge, and uh, the experience, 
it's supramental. Otherwise, if you have just knowledge, it's a dry knowledge. You don't know exactly, you, don't, you are not feeling it. It's not uh, alive for you. It's just a theory. Or if you have just the experience, well, it's something so vague. You, you cannot express it. You cannot um, put it um, in your life in a very clear way. It's, now it is, tomorrow it isn't. And how can you, to get it back? Well, I don't know. Mm. Because I don't know how it came to you. But if you can identify your mm -hmm. experience, and this is the perspective. And this is why uh, our yoga system is so effective. You see, when you are a musician and you have an instrument, you have the notes, the, you have the writing of that music, so you have to learn how to read that. Then you have the practice of uh, what you are doing, violin or whatever. But there is another element that is very, very important, the tuning forks. Imagine that you have a guitar or a piano or a violin which is out of tune. Even if you learn vaguely to read the notes there, simply it doesn't sound, it doesn't make any sense. And this is what happens with many people who are trying to learn yoga from a book. They are trying to, and actually they can figure out for asanas and sometimes even a little more uh, esoteric aspects. But it's exactly as you try to, to play an instrument and you have no tuning of that instrument and it doesn't make sense what and you're doing. And you have no ear. Yeah. And for yeah, you, you're, it's okay. So, <laughs> and it's, well, it's, it's the only thing you have played. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. It's the only thing, if it is the only thing you have played, you call it yoga. Mm. <laughs> what you call it, symphony. But when, what is a spiritual guide giving, um, which is unique contribution also, is the tuning forks, which here we call it exemplifications. Because exactly the tuning fork is the one giving you the, the scale of values. It gives you the standard states. When you activate the heart chakra, this is that energy. Here it is, ping, and you hear it, and now you know it, and you can recognize it in all the correct practice of uh, the cobra posture or any other posture that activate the heart chakra. So in this way, you play your instrument, but from out of tune, you start to be in tune, so to speak, and it starts to make sense. And that's the, sen the, the sensation of uh, power and efficiency that is unique to this form of, to this form of yoga, because it's the yoga in mm. tune, so mm. to speak. Mm. So that's why you cannot separate the um, initiation, which is through the spiritual guide, coming through all the people who get the initiation, because you can tune your instrument, for instance, and go to another instrument and give the tuning to the other instrument. Look, this is the, uh, this note. And then you give to, from your instrument to the other instrument and so on. So in this way, all the instruments are in tune but it comes from the tuning forks. And mm. actually uh, a very important element that Greek was reigniting because it exists traditionally, but people forgot about it, is that actually the universe is made of these fundamental universal tuning forks that are constantly, eternally vibrating in each of them in a fixed, so to speak, um, tune. And then he was just revealing, you can yourself tune in with each of these um, tuning forks. But for that, you have exercises. So exercises alone uh, lose mm. sense, absence of this uh, process of tuning. So uh, it's an analogy to understand because you were wondering how, what is the experience you get. That's, that's why in the beginning you didn't know anything. So the chaos that you are, that cacophony that you are playing there <laughs> seems pretty. And then suddenly you hear all kind of amazing harmonies in you. And it feels mm. so amazing. Mm. Because now you're really playing. You're really um, making yes, the symphony. And they are in you. Yeah. They are not uh, that someone is giving to you, look, you are very, I'm, I'm I, I, from out of pity, uh, I give you one yeah. tuning fork <laughs> in this analogy. It, they are all the time in you. And um, coming back to what I call the supramental perspective, this is um, making us aware and is opening us our eyes to discover and to realize that we have already all this in us. And then we can uh, be 
active and even we are not depending anymore of some um, outside tuning.